By far the hardest decision for me this year with tech is which size MacBook Pro to get. The 14 inch or the 16 inch? Are you also in the same boat? Let's talk. Hi, this is David Tech for Baba, a channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing to the channel. In today's video, let's look at the similarities and differences between the 14-inch and the 16-inch MacBook Pros to see if deciding between the two can be easier. I'll also share which one I'm choosing at the end. I think, for now. First, the similarities, and they are mostly the same. Besides the base 14-inch, which has the Downbin M1 Pro chip, all the other 14-inch and the 16-inch MacBook Pros can be configured with the same specs. Either the M1 Pro or the M1 Max with the same number of CPU cores and GPU cores. The same amount of shared memory, 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes. And the same amount of very fast internal storage, from 512 gigabytes all the way to whopping 8 terabytes. Both are made of the same premium material in the same boxier shape. Have the same keyboards, with the physical function keys instead of the touch bar. Same number of good mics and speakers. Same assortment of ports on both sides. I'm so glad they're back. The same high quality XDR display with ProMotion. And yes, the same notch. It's even the same size on both, even though the 14 inch has a smaller size display. Now the differences. The most obvious difference is the size and weight. The 14 inch is 12.31 inches by 8.71 inches, while the 16 inch is 14 inches by 9.77 inches. Here is the 14 inch on top of the 16 inch. The 16 inch is quite a bit larger. The thickness difference though is much smaller. The 16 inch is only about 0.05 inches thicker. The 16 inch is much heavier at 4.7 pounds than the 14 inch at 3.5 pounds. That's a difference of more than a pound. Very noticeable. Even though the 16 inch is still portable, the 14 inch is definitely much easier to carry around for a long time. The smaller size also makes it easier to use in tight spaces like those little trays on an airplane. All the other differences are all related to the size difference really. Due to the larger body, the 16 inch has a larger display, 6.2 inches versus the 14.2 inches on the 14 inch. Also due to the larger body, the 16 inch has a much bigger trackpad. Now the size of the trackpad on the 14 inch is more than sufficient, but the larger one on the 16 inch is even better and easier to use. Due to the larger body, the speakers on the 16 inch are bigger. Here is what the speakers on the 16 inch sound like. Remember to cherish each moment. Here's what the 14 inch sound like. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember to cherish each moment. Very good too. Both sound better than any laptops I've heard, but the 16 inch just sound even better and louder. Again, due to the larger body, the 16 inch has larger batteries inside. The 16 inch can last up to 21 hours of video playback, while the 14 inch can last 17 hours, which is already quite impressive for such a powerful laptop. Of course, the battery will drain much faster on both with heavier workloads like video or photo editing. Under these heavier workloads the last few weeks, I constantly get a few hours more battery life out of the 16 inch than the 14 inch. Lastly, due to the larger size, the 16 inch has more room for bigger heat sinks and fans to dissipate heat better and quieter than the 14 inch. To be honest, when I use these laptops normally for 4K video editing and photo editing the last few weeks, I only heard the fan on the 14 inch a few times when I was exporting large video files and importing and generating previews on a lot of high res photos. 
The fans also came on here and there on the 16 inch under heavy load, but only at low speed so I couldn't really hear them. I only knew they were on by looking at the thermal app TG Pro. Oh, and there's one other difference, $200 US. If the 14 inch and the 16 inch are spec the same, the 16 inch costs $200 more. For example, spec with M1 Max, 32 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of memory, and two terabytes of storage, the 14 inch costs $3,699, and the 16 inch costs $3,899. $200 more. So which one am I choosing for myself? The 14 inch or the 16 inch? I've used the larger 15 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros as my main laptops for many years. I switched over to the 13 inch MacBook Air last year and enjoy its portability tremendously. So I had my mindset on the 14 inch especially after I found out it could be spec the same way as the 16 inch for the first time. Even though the fans do kick in more often, the performance stay about the same under most of my workloads without too much throttling. I thought to myself, if I need a bigger screen, I can just attach it to the same 32 inch monitor I've been using with the 13 inch M1 MacBook Air. All good, right? Well, it was all good until I opened up the 16 inch and saw this gorgeous 16 inch display and started using it. That was it. I just can't say no to this big, beautiful display. Sure, the bigger trackpad, bigger speakers, and the bigger battery are all very nice too. But this large beautiful display is what got me. I think I'd choose the 14 inch if portability is much more important to me than anything else. Or if there's a limited budget. The Downbin M1 Pro with 8 core CPU and 14 core GPU is only available on the 14 inch. And I think this base model 14 inch is the best bang for the buck for many people. At just $2,000. I'll put a link to my thoughts on the base 14 inch here and in the description below. It has a few interesting shots of the Apple Park Visitor Center in Cupertino where I picked it up. So if budget and portability are not the main concerns, I go with the 16 inch since it offers so much more than the 14 inch for just $200 more at any spec. At the end of the day, there are no wrong choices. Both are great tools that can help me capture and preserve time I share with kids and family. They're by far the best laptops I've used, and I've used many. Hopefully, knowing the similarities and differences make the decision a bit easier for you. For me, it came down to how much I value the bigger screen over portability. And I picked the bigger screen. What about you? Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Are you also having a hard time choosing between the 14 inch and the 16 inch MacBook Pros? I'd love to know what you end up with in the comments below. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, please subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified when I put out my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember to cherish each moment.